Hello Explorers! Hello Explorers! Hello Explorers! The next story is really the story of a local fisherman, Mr. Raymond Gojum, a very experienced and very, uh, you, know, you know, a real skilled fisherman. Um, living in Alderney, we're only nine miles from the French coast, so the obvious place to sell our catch is the nearest French port, which is Cherbourg, where they have a big fish market and our local men can get a good price. England is too far away and Guernsey, well, you're competing with the local fishermen there. Anyway, it's called Trouble with French Customs. In the late 70s, two of us Alderney fishermen had started to land our catch at Goury, just across the race in France, so as to save the long haul to Cherbourg, to the officially sanctioned fish market. This illicit trade had been carried on for some time, quite amicably, between ourselves and the buyers, when one year a local fisherman in Guri offered to buy our shellfish. But I had to turn him down, as I'd already accepted an offer from my regular customer. Taking offence and out of spite, he informed on our activities to the customs. On the 6th of September, we were both arrested and our boats impounded. I was subjected to 36 hours of continual merciless grinning, grilling and deprived of food, drink and, worst of all, sleep. During the whole period the psychological torture was fiendish. I refused to answer questions, but my partner in crime was spared interrogation as he had no French so they could get, get nothing out of him. Perhaps the customs officials had some course for their extreme measures as some Channel Island fishermen, mainly from Jersey, had been landing drugs. But this was not so in our case. Many foreigners wrongly assume that the representatives of French officialdom are very civilised because of their seeming courtesy, and in the case of customs, their invisibility. When the mask drops, however, they can behave like third world thugs. On this occasion, their treatment of my French wife was unforgivable, as it was uncalled for. In the end, I was fined £6,000. A hell of a lot of money in those days. Late in the evening, on the 8th of September, we were both let go. A strong westerly force, 6 to 7, was blowing, and the flood was at, was at its peak, running at 9 knots. Plus. But. Although exhausted, I just wanted to get away. It was like a wounded animal, longing for freedom. So, in the pitch darkness, we set off. However, I made an error of navigation, in my state of mind, and in the mountainous, confused overfalls, we were swept around the corner between La Forraine and the Gros du Raz, that's the La Hague lighthouse. It's a very rough bit of water, I'm telling you. By a miracle, and with very little judgment on my part, we reached the Bas Brefort boy, where I discovered that my crewman, who I had forgotten about, had lashed himself to the mask, soaked to the skin, and absolutely terrified. We were too drained of energy to return to Alderney, so we turned in towards, towards Aumontville, where I dropped anchor southeast of the Pointe de Chardeur. We just dropped down where we lay, sodden, in our oilskins, and slept. Early next morning we caught the tide for Alderney. Maybe that evening we got a little drunk. In our profession, we sometimes deserved to. 
I still love French and I still love the French. I married a French woman. Voila. Mm -hmm.